Hey teams, I'm coach John Burnett alongside two of our control team members, Devon and Adrian, here to walk you through how to wire your robot. We're going to be showing you the basics of the necessary components as well as some tips and tricks along the way. But before we begin, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss another episode. And then leave a comment below with your team name and number so we know who's tuning in. Included in the description below is the official document from FIRST about wiring your robot as well as our preferred diagram to showcase the connections. We will be following these today as we step you through how to connect all the necessary electronics on your robot. So get your wires ready as we show you this is how we robot. Hey everyone, this is Devon, member of the control team here for QBranch, and I'm going to walk you through some wiring basics and terminology. Adrian will be on screen in a little bit to demonstrate some wiring tips and tricks. Before anything else, we recommend a person is modifying any electronics to have the power switch off and the battery unplugged. This is a safety issue both for the user as well as the electronics inside. Okay, first up, let's talk gauges. You will likely already know that for gauges, the lower the number, the thicker the wire. Most often in FYC, we stick to 12 or 14 gauge wire. The only lower is 4 or 6 gauge wire for the battery connections. 18 gauge wire is for connecting small electronics you will see later in this video. So if you're stocking up, keeping some 12, 14, and 18 AWG wire is the best bet. The color of the wires you should stick to is red and black, though some other colors are permitted according to the manuals, we see no other reason to change other than red and black. Bonded wire purses through any mark is always a great option. There are a couple of different styles of connectors with slight variations in the best practices, so let's get an example of taking regular wire and then adding a connector. Let's start with a common ring terminal. This process works the same for the spade terminals or really any other kind. If you have bonded wire, be sure to use diagonal cutters to help separate the ends we will be adding to connectors to. Start by using wire strippers to take off just a quarter inch of insulation from the end. We love these automatic wire strippers made by Anchor. We put a link to where you can purchase these items in the description below. Now we are putting on the ring terminal. We want to just barely see the wire coming through the hole. The point is to make metal to metal contact between the wire and terminal. Then take the best crimpers you can find and clamp down hard on the terminal. We will also put a link in the description below for similar crimplers to this. Finally, the most important part is the tug test. You need to be sure the terminal can withstand a good pull from you because whether you like it or not, if the terminal cannot withstand your forces, then that wire is coming loose in the middle of a match. It's better to fix it now than lose out on a match and fix it in the pits. If there is any exposed wire, be sure to wrap with electrical tape or heat shrink for safety. Now for our preferred connector. This is the Anderson Power Pull Connector available through Andy Mark. For several seasons, we have had the issues of terminals coming disconnected or loose wires in the robot. With these connectors, we have not had any issues of the sort. The downside is the slightly more complicated process and specialized tool. Let me show you. We are going to start off with the same wire, split the bond into a strip a quarter inch from the end to expose the wire. Now we are going to take the metal part of the connector and be sure the wire does not go past the small clamp. If it does, then you will not be able to fit this into the plastic housing seam later. Trim the wire now until this fits. Next, grab the special power pole crimp available through Andy Mark. A link is once again in the description below. Insert metal into the crimper, then wire and clamp down all the way. This makes the metal into a rounded terminal of sorts. Finally, we will insert into the corresponding colored plastic housing. For reference, the bendy bit we call the tooth must be on the bottom. Push the terminal down into the housing until you hear the click and there is no more movement from a tug test. If you can move the terminal back and forth inside the housing, then there is not a secure connection and likely you had too much exposed wire which went the past the small part of the terminal like I warned against earlier. Once both are done, this will then connect with any other Anderson power pole connector and quickly and easily. We love it. Batteries are a different beast all on their own. These are the only part of your robot where you will find 6 gauge wire and some teams go so far as to make their own 4 gauge wires. These connectors will come in your kit parts and are available for purchase from Andy Mark. 
The ends are already stripped for you. Just remove the cut insulation from the ends to get started. Unlike the other wires, here we need specifically the lugs from the kit or parts of any Mac. Insert the wires into the terminal and use those crimpers to get a good connection. Use the tug test to be sure and then use either the electrical tape or heat shrink to insulate the connection. Now we are connecting these terminals to open terminals on the batteries by using the provided nylog nuts and bolts. Be sure to tighten these as down as much as possible and then cover with electrical tape to insulate and prevent any accidents. We prefer to use this charging station purchased from Andy Mart at both our home site and competitions. Preferably, we charge the batteries on a low amperage when we're at our build site, but high amperage at competitions. The high amperage will cause more wear and tear on the inside of the battery, but we have matches to play, people. For safety, always be sure to let the batteries cool down after heavy user charging. If used too quickly, the acids inside will eat up and cause the battery to swell. We also recommend the purchase and use of a battery bee. This will allow teams to quickly check the charge of a battery by a quick two presses of the button to read the voltage levels at any different amperage as well as the overall charge. Anything at 13 volts or higher is great. Now let's wire up the robot. First up is the all important battery to the main switch. The switch comes in the kit parts and was required for the competition. The red or positive wire is what we are interrupting here. So the battery's connector's red wire goes to the switch through a ring terminal and then from the switch to the power distribution panel, or PDP, through another six gauge wire with ring terminals. The black wire goes from the connector on the battery directly to the PDP. This step is a little tricky and requires a small hex key to open up the protective case and then clamp back down once we are finished. Next up is the connecting PDP to the small electronics on the robot. These are all done at the other end of the PDP which is much thinner than the gauge wire. Let's start here with the PDP to the Robo Rio. This happens on the side with the 10 amp fuse. These fuses are available to purchase at any auto parts location, but we hope you are not burning through these ever. Strip about half an inch of wire from the end and then fold over and twist the end of the wire. This will allow for better connections in the push terminal. Push down on the white tab with a small screwdriver or pen and then insert the red or black wire into the corresponding slot. Let up on the white tab and then the terminal will bite down on the bare wire holding it in place. Another tug test is in order here to be sure there is a secure connection. Then the side with the 20 amp fuse has two pairs of red and black bolt slots which will be used to wire up the voltage regulator module or VRM and the pneumatic control module or PCM. Same idea as before when it comes to stripping wires, pushing on the tab, inserting the bare wires and then perform a tug test for a secure connection. Next up, we are going to connect the Wi-Fi router or radio to the VRM. We very much prefer power over Ethernet or pole cords as they are much less likely to come loose during a match. The red and black terminals for the pole cables come with terminals already attached and must be inserted into the 12 volt 2 amp slots. Now we're going to show you how we connect any motor with a speed controller to the PDP. First we need to decide if we want to use a 40 amp slot or a 20 amp slot. We like to reserve the 40 amp slot for heavy duty mechanics like robot lifting device and the drive motors. Every motor needs a speed controller of some kind, like a Victor SP, a Spark Max, or a Talon SRX, or any other kind. Then from the speed controller, we also connect to the PDP. Be sure to connect from the side labeled plus and minus. The motor side will have the letter M to designate as such. Reversing this can have serious consequences with the electronics. Instead of any connectors on the end, we will do as we did with other electronics and connect bare wire. Ship a quarter inch off at the end, and then instead of a push, this is more like a prying snap. Take a small flathead screwdriver and insert the PDP into the desired terminal. Pull up and then the terminal should open up to take the bare wire. Insert the wire and take out the screwdriver and the terminal should snap back into place, clamping down on the wire in the process. One last required item is the robot signal light or RSL. This setup requires a jumper wire shown here to go between two of the terminals. The other end of the wire gets plugged in directly to the Robo Rio into the slot labeled RSL. No other power needed. And now you have all of the required electric connections to get your robot up and running. Before we wrap up, a couple of small Q-tips learned over the years of unsuccessful wiring jobs. First off, always make sure you plan your wiring and take your time. Wires should follow common roads and should be zip tied down to the base plate housing electronics. This helps avoid spaghetti mess of wires crossing over each other in three different dimensions. Second, 
Always label the ends of wires initially connecting or when you need to rewire. This is just good practice to cut down on time tracing wires for when something inevitably goes wrong. Three, always plan for hits. If the challenge has bumpy terrain or consider putting some foam padding under the robo reel and radio so hard hits or bumps do not cause any loss of connection. Okay, now you should have a fully wired robot in with some basics under your belt for electrical organization and safety. Thanks again for watching and being with us here today. Remember to leave a comment with your team name and number so we know which robots to cheer for this season. And as always, subscribe to this channel to keep finding out more on This Is How We Robot.